our last video on setting up a jack plane. You know that I left off turning the square piece of wood into an octagon. We're going to use that same square piece of wood now as the handle to our first project, which is a mallet. And a mallet is just used to pound a chisel. And we're going to only use three tools to do that. So we're going to use our jack plane, we're going to use a handsaw, and then we're going to use a chisel. And we're not going to make a fancy mallet because I like to think of a mallet like the way I think about the velveteen rabbit. Uh, they start off looking very nice and we're proud of them, but eventually they only become real, they only become useful when they get all beaten up and we've used them to pound things and that's the life of a mallet and so I wouldn't spend too much time making a, a super fancy one. We'd rather make a useful tool and then use it to, to make other things. And so the three materials we need for it is our stick. This one happens to be southern yellow pine. It's just a length off of a 2x10. And then we have a, a chunk of hardwood, and that's about six inches long, about two inches thick, and about three inches wide. It's just to give it enough weight where it can persuade a chisel properly. And the only cheating that we've done so far is I've used a drill press to drill a through hole. Uh, it's a one inch diameter hole that runs all the way through it. And then the last thing we need is just a wee little piece of hardwood that we're gonna use for a wedge to tie the whole thing together. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, there's all kinds of tricks to, to lay out an octagon. Uh, you can use dividers uh, and, and do some tricks with geometry at the end, and those are very cool. But when we're designing our velveteen rabbit mallet, it's probably good enough to just eyeball it. And so this side has been, I've just drawn lines on there, and we're going to plane down to those lines. And if you simply laid it out where the middle section is about 60% of the total width, that'll be close enough. Um, that way all of your facets end up being about the same and really your most important tool is your eye. If it looks right, it's probably right. So just like in our last video, uh, we've drawn the lines on this octagon and, or on this square and we're going to turn it into an octagon and then I just set it up and technique wise, I'm just keeping the plane nice and flat on there. Uh, it takes off a pretty good shaving because we've got that, that cambered blade that we've carved into it. and. So it doesn't take too long before it starts to take a pretty wide shaving off of here. And I will spare you the details of watching me plane all the, all the four sides of it. But you can see as you go right along, it goes quite fast. Um, if you've got a chunk of beeswax to put on the sole of a plane, that ends up taking a lot less effort to to push it over the wood. And that basically is, is good enough. I've gotten down to my lines on either side and now I've got a diamond and it's just a matter of planing off the other two sides. I told you I would spare you watching me plane the whole thing down. I set my watch to see how long it was gonna take. I thought it would take about two minutes and I had 30 seconds left over. And so I didn't end up with a perfect octagon but it's, it's an octagon that is close enough to, to being equal facets on all sides that it'll work good for a handle on a mallet. And I could spend more time making everything perfect. I spent the last 30 seconds of my two minutes taking a couple of passes on the unplaned facets. So now they're all you know uniformly pretty nice and smooth. And now we'll go on to the next thing, which is we need a, a one inch diameter round end on this. And so to lay out the, the, what will become the tenon on the end of this, we need to know how long it's gonna be. And so by simply laying the, the two pieces over and leaving just a little bit extra um, sticking out at the top, and then taking a pencil, I'll just make a mark on there that gives us an approximate length for that tenon. And then I've got a one inch drill bit which was used to drill the hole in there. And then I find the center, and I've already marked uh, center lines on there, and I poke the drill bit on there and run it around. And by running it around, it scores a small line all the way around the end, and that gives me a target to shoot for that we can trim it down to size using that we know it is a perfect one inch round uh, size for the end of it. If we didn't have a self-imposed limit of only using three tools, uh, I would get out a, a square 
uh, of some sort and mark all the way around there. Uh, but I've, I told you we weren't going to use too many tools to do this. And so I, I would use the block of wood itself. Um, I know that that's relatively square. And so I can use that and just eyeball it. And then I can go right around the handle. It's so now we've got our line marked all the way around this. And we want to use our handsaw to cut down a little ways into that. That's going to create what they call a shoulder around there, where it will transition very abruptly from an octagon to a round. And then we'll clamp it in the vise and use our chisel to just start shooting for round. And if you, if you think round as you're doing it, then you end up being able to, to trim it down without too much trouble. Uh, and so I'll just show you the process kind of quickly here. And so I take my handsaw and I, I just want to skim it over the surface. So I don't want to put too much effort onto this. I just want to start carving that shoulder and, and maybe a couple of passes like that. Now I've got seven more to do because it's an octagon. And so I just keep clamping it and I'm using my thumb to just guide where we are. And Best advice on hand sawing with a hand saw is to, is to just let the weight of the saw itself put all the downward pressure on it. And, and, and just imagine you're skimming over the top of the piece that you're working on and try to keep the teeth from touching. You'll fail at it and then that's the right amount of pressure so it gets a nice cross cut on there. And so, so now we've got this round uh, target set up there on the end and I've cut the shoulders with the handsaw gone all the way around and so now we're going to use our chisel to to guide it around so that we can get a round tenon on the end and if you think of anything as, as a cutting tool they cut better when they're slicing rather than chopping and so I would like to start on one side of the chisel when I start the cut and I would like to end on the other side. And so as I'm, as I'm cutting, I'm also slicing. Um, and it's hard to do to get out of the way of the camera here. Uh, so I'm gonna put both hands behind it. Uh, my right hand is gonna do all the pushing and my left hand is gonna guide it. But if you think of a chisel like a gun sight, anything out in front of it is likely to get stabbed or cut. And so I would like to keep my hands back behind the blade. And so I'm just gonna set it up here and and I'm just slicing as I go, and I'm just slicing to get down to that shoulder line, and then I stop when I get there, and these first few cuts, I gotta take quite a bit of material off this one side, and so I'm just pushing and slicing as I go. When we get closer to the end, uh, end of the process, end of the shaping, you can turn it around and, and start shaving the other way. And now at this point, I've got the bevel of the chisel downward, and so it's less likely to dig in and take a big bite. And then I'm back to just sort of slicing across. And if you think about the amount of force that you need to do this with my thumb is pushing it off to the side and my right hand is, is really providing the power. It's about as much force as you would need to cut a hard cheese, you know, a mozzarella or something like that. And so it's not, you don't need a lot of, a lot of power. You don't need your own mallet yet. Uh, to guide the chisel to do what we want it to do. And so it's just taking lots of little shaves now and, and continuing to think round. Uh, the more we make that tenon round, then the better the bond will be when we put it all together.